Amazing, right? It's too bad the preacher couldn't do it in a couple of minutes like these young guys did, right? <laughs> Alrighty. Well, welcome to Wallenstein. Great to have you with us. And uh, if you're visiting, we're uh, just into our second message of a series we're doing on our vision statement. It's called Free to Be. Um, and so we're just going to launch right in. Christ is in us, and He has set us free. So, I want us to think for a minute just about what's happening in our culture, in society. So, I grew up in what is called the modern era. Some call it modernity, right? So, what does that mean? Well, roughly modernity, and this is just really roughly, okay, but just really roughly from about the 1500s to the middle of the 1900s was what's called the modern era. In the modern era, here's the, what I essentially grew up understanding about reality around me, and it's what was taught in universities and schools and stuff. Um, one is there's an objective reality. Essentially, there's a reality, a truth that is completely outside of me and outside of mankind. Okay? Right? That's number one. Right? There's an objective reality outside of there. I'm not the one who determines it. Secondly, historical and scientific statements are either true or false. And some of you are probably thinking, yeah, what's new about that? But we'll, we'll get there because it's not necessarily so now. So I grew up being educated scientifically. It's true or it's false. Right? Um, I grew up in a culture where society can change and improve using region, reason and logic. Okay? And by the way, not all of this is good. So I grew up in an era where we can just think our th way through problems and logic, right? We don't need God, just logic does it, right? Uh, reason and logic are valid, and they apply to everyone. And there's such a thing as human nature. This is really important. There's such a thing as human nature that is present at birth, and society doesn't give it to you, right? So there's, a, there's something about humanity in us we're born with it, and society does not determine. And you'll see where I'm going with this in a minute, because things are not the same. That's what I grew up with. Well, this is no longer the modern age. We're now in what's called the postmodern age. Okay, so what does that mean? Okay, it's called, sometimes you hear it called postmodernism. Very roughly, from the middle of the 1900s up to now, there has been a gradual change. Now, Europe is about a generation ahead of us, so you just look to Europe and what's happening in Europe, and that is where we're going to be in another generation. So you look at what's been happening there with religion and culture and society, That's, so they're, they're just ahead of us. Okay, so these ideas that I'm going to share with you now, and I'm going to try to keep it really simple, is what our youth and young adults are growing up with or have grown up with. So all of you over here have grown up in the postmodern era. Well, most of you. Yeah, yeah, all of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can sneak in there too, Ken. And many of you here have grown up in the postmodern era. The rest of you guys, yeah, you're, uh, okay. Give or take a little bit. We're smattered around a little bit. Well, what does that mean? Everything on the last slide is questioned and considered actually untrue. Everything I said back there is untrue. So let me give you a very, very Simple, basic definition, and I'm, 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 uh, it's important. I'm, I, anybody who eats this stuff for breakfast, you're going to look and say, Ron, you're really simplifying it, but you could, you could just spend days, I spent hours and hours and hours to get two minutes ready for you, because I'm trying to figure out how do I make this succinct and straightforward, okay, because it's very complex, but ultimately, what does it come down to? The main idea and so what am, I, what am I getting at here? Whether you understand, you've heard of this term postmodern era, postmodernism, or anything else, the going philosophy of society, university, and out there in the street, here is what it is. That since there are uncountable possible interpretations to understand the world, there's no way to interpret reality. That is, in essence, the heart of postmodernism. Nobody knows the truth because there's too many options. That is the going philosophy. So, what that means is, the technical term they use is, there's no such thing as a meta-narrative. 
no all-encompassing story. So, for example, when I was studying history at University of Waterloo in 1988, things were just beginning to shift then, but history was still pretty standard. I was given a big honking book about this thick, no exaggeration, called the Mediterranean. And so it was a meta-narrative. It was a history of the Mediterranean, and I had a week to read it and write a paper. <laughs> that was deadly. But that doesn't happen anymore. Okay? So what does that mean? The Bible... Okay, let's get right down to home. Judeo-Christian teaching is only one of a number of options. Now, the truth is, th this is not new at all. I'm reading Kings and Chronicles right now, just reading through there. What do you think they believed? You could believe in one God and believe in all the other gods too. Or the God of the mountains, the God of this, the God of that. This is nothing new. It's just dressed up differently. Okay, But the big thing is... You cannot, what you're taught, what you hear, what you're fed is that there is no big picture story and you really cannot know the truth. So, let me give you some examples then. Right? Since that previous slide is considered true, all attempts at interpreting and understanding the, uh, there is only one way, ultimately it's a struggle for power. Any attempt to have the truth is wrong and twisted, and you're just attempting to control and oppress. Right? So me wanting to share my faith. So I did a wedding yesterday. I don't know if there were any Christians there outside of myself and my son. Right? And so, you know, I have interesting conversations afterwards because the couple knew, and I told them, God is going to come into the picture, and I graciously just tried to share a little bit of the gospel within doing the ceremony. I said, otherwise, go get a JP. Right? No, but they were, they were good with that. But what are the conversations afterwards, you know, that you have with people? And, you know, one of those conversations was this whole thing of, you know, it's our right to feed these poor people, but don't you dare share the gospel because then you're taking, you're using your power to oppress them. So this is any attempt to, to be firm in something and say, this is the truth, it becomes a, it, you're, you're looked at suspect. This is, this is a power grab for you. And I'll give you an example. Right? The pro-life the pro movement. Anti-abortion is wrong. Right? Facts and what constitutes life are not relevant. Okay? You, males especially have no right to speak into this. That's the current philosophy. We try to use logic and say, what is life? What is this? It, it's irrelevant in a postmodern world. So here's an the BBC, Alabama abortion ban. Should men have a debate, any, any say in the debate at all? That's, that's the current thing that's going on. Right? Don't oppress me. I choose. So there you go. Thou shalt not mess with women's rights. Fallopians 122. Right? Right? Let me give you another example. Since there is no such thing as universal human nature... Each society determines what it looks like. Hence the whole gender thing. Gender becomes a choice determined by society. Okay? So here's from my Facebook page. I went in and I looked. Okay, what are my options here? So this is my, my options, right? So you can go in and I can choose. I just did this on the week, uh, just on Thursday, right? Went in and I can change my gender to custom. I can type in whatever I want. I can be whatever I want. And then I can choose the pronoun. So if I change this now, then when you wish me happy birthday, you will wish them happy birthday. Okay? So this is where our culture's at. I can determine what my gender is. That is normal. It's not abnormal at all. What constitutes a family is fluid. Because society determines what is a family. So you got modern family. Right? And you see this in all of what is out there in the culture. You see, we're, um, okay? So we live in a culture where there is no absolute truth, and we'll see how permeated this is in our culture in a moment. And you get to determine everything. Okay? We're going to go to the scriptures. Second Timothy. You're using a Pew Bible, page 843. Our message this morning is God has spoken. What does he have to say about this? We're going to be in 2 Timothy. 
Now, just before we read 2 Timothy, let me just give you a quick outline of the context, because it's really important. We're popping into the middle of Paul's letter to Timothy. So what's the context here that we're jumping into? And I think this will help you as we just focus in on the words. Okay? So chapter 2, Paul is writing to Timothy. He's essentially been warning about false teachers and false ideas. He's urging Timothy to patiently seek to bring people back to the truth. So when we come to chapter 3, here we're going to see the outline of chapter 3. This is actually going to be my message. Paul tells Timothy, very difficult times are going to come. And he talks about the last days. Well, actually, Hebrews tells us, right, in these last days, God has spoken to us through his son. And we see that actually a number of times in the New Testament. We are in the last days, and they have been since Jesus was here. Right? And Paul says, very difficult times are going to come, and the self will be central. So this is what we're going to read in a moment. Difficult times are coming. They're here. The self is very central. People will be religious, but without the real power of God. And then he's, what he's going to say is, to live for the truth is going to bring you persecution. And thirdly, the third main thing he says is, the only defense and hope is the Word of God. So now, if I just plop over there and run out of energy, you've got where I'm going in this message. Difficult times are coming. Living for the truth is going to bring you persecution, and your only defense is the Word of God. Hence, our vision and our very first statement, we are going to be biblically based. So that's where I'm going to go in these few minutes that we have. So let's read. I'm reading from the New International. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with them. They are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control over weak-willed women who are loaded down with sins and swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning but never able to come able to acknowledge the truth. Just as Janes and Jambres oppose Moses, so also these men oppose the truth. Men of depraved minds who are, as far as the faith is concerned, rejected. But they will not get very far because, as in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way, my life, my purpose, my faith, my patience, my love, my endurance, persecutions, sufferings, what kind of things happened to me at Antioch, I, uh, Iconium and Lystra, the persecutions I endured, let the Lord, yet the Lord rescued me from them all. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil men and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue. But as for you, continue in what you've learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it. And how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed, useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Father, help us. Help us to understand the times we live in, to understand how we are being deceived or in threat of deception. But help us to see you, to see Christ, to see and understand the beauty of Christ in us. We ask this in Jesus' name. So just three things, just thinking about this, okay? Because what we're thinking about this morning is God has spoken. Three things I want to say to you. Wake up, take a stand, and know the word. It's three things I want to say just quickly. Just bang, 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 coming out of this passage, okay? wake up. It's the first night of 2 Timothy 3. That's what Paul's saying to Timothy. This is nothing new at all. Okay? So here's three different translations of what he says. Mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. That's the translation we just read. The New King James. Know this. In the last days, perilous times will come. The message. Don't be naive. 
There are difficult times ahead. Many of us, I think, we're very, very naive. We're just floating along like none of this is happening. Now, I want you to think for a moment. You think does it, this doesn't impact, impact you? Now, I want you to think again. Okay, and so I wrestle with this. I struggle with this. I'm looking and saying, oh, my goodness, I don't want to wrap my head around postmodernism anymore. I'm sick of this stuff. I'm just tired of reading about it. But you've got to wrap your head around it. And it's a struggle. It's in our legal system. 2,000, already in 2,000, right the rights board finds a printer for refusing gay business. Back in March 3rd of 2000, this guy got fined and convicted. His religious rights did not trump, and they told him, you have to print for these people. And he was fined $5,000. Uh, Trinity Western, just last year, right? What does it say? Trinity Western, here we are, CBC, loses their fight for Christian law school as the court limits on religious freedom. They found it reasonable. BBC, what did they say? Canada's Supreme Court rules LGBT rights trump religious freedom. This is coming like a freight train down at us, folks. Your rights are not always going to be here for you. Enjoy them while you have them. Right? It's in advertising. It's in entertainment. It's in the business world. So, what's happening now? We don't like what's going on with abortion freedoms or the, uh, the other side, the pro-life movement. Okay, well, Netflix and Disney just said, all right, we're not going to produce in your state anymore. Political pressure. So you've got huge corporations, Facebook, Twitter, all of these major mega corporations, they're in on the morality issue. And they're going to tell you what you're going to believe. As a matter of fact, if Google wants to, they'll wipe you off the face of the earth. George Orwell, if any of you are familiar with that, 1984. You will cease to exist in, the, in, the, in that world out there if they want you to. That's coming, and it's getting there, and it's getting there. Right? Okay? It's in our education system. Oh, boy. Is it ever. It is in the universities, it's in teacher training, and it's in the public schools. Like big time. Okay, so here's a poster from Toronto District Christian School Board. I can spend a lot of time on this. I just want to say, you wake up because it's there. All right, love has no gender. Okay, so there's even threesomes in there. There's everything. Everything goes, and we're going to accept everybody, and you better do so. And we're being taught it. Okay, Rich, you said uh, Jordan Peterson. You're going to get to hear Jordan Peterson again. Okay. So Jordan Peterson, I want you to listen to what this guy has to say. We're only going to listen to a minute and a half clip, okay? Who is this guy? He's a clinical psychologist. He's a professor of psychology at the University of Toronto. And I've cut out just a, a, barely a minute and a bit about what he has to say about OISE, Ontario Institute of Studies for, in, in Education. Okay, so I got a master's in education from there back in almost 20 years ago now. I saw this coming. I saw this coming. I think I've shared that with you before. And you listen to what. So he is a prof at University of Toronto. So he's talking about University of Toronto. And I want you to hear what he has to say. And this guy is not a Christian by his own profession. Human studies. It's all the ethnic studies groups. It's anthropology. It's sociology. It's social work. And most of all, it's education. And OISE, for example, in Ontario, is perhaps, apart from the Ontario Human Rights Commission, the most dangerous institution in Canada. It should, it should be defunded. It's as simple as that. They don't do the research they purport to do. They're not interested in, 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 at all in education. They're interested in the indoctrination of people as young as they can, uh, as young as they can get their hands on, so to speak. Now, we need to figure out, our society needs to figure out how to stop shunting public tax money to radical left-wing activists. And he goes on. That's a non-Christian professor talking about one of the main institutions that is educating our teachers, especially the masters and doctorate level, and providing the curriculum that is going out to our educational system. He says they're after your kids to indoctrinate them. Interesting. So what do we need to do? We need to wake up. We need to stand up. What did Paul say to Timothy, verses 10 to 13? He said, difficult times are coming. It's here. It's here. You're not getting away from it. Okay? You follow my teaching, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord rescued me. Indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. You don't have to look for this. 
But evil men and impostors will proceed from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Okay? If there is such a thing as a lie, then there is such a thing as truth, contrary to what you're being fed. Right? So what did Jesus say? You belong to your father, the devil. You want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there's no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. You hear that? Jesus said this to you. The devil is the father of lies. You notice, by the way, the graphics on the inside, believe anything. Here's Truth May, uh, uh, Time Magazine, April 3rd, 2017, is Truth Dead. Right? Right? So Jesus was saying to the Jews who believed in him, if you continue in my word, then you are my truly disciples of mine. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Who are you going to believe? Right? What is this word? We saw these verses last week. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers, to the prophets, and at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, now, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, and through whom He made the universe. You will know the truth, the truth will set you free. The devil is the father of lies. Jesus is the living word of God. In the beginning was the word, right? Okay, before we go, let me try to go there. Okay, take a stand. 6% of Canadians, 11% of Christians talk to others about the Bible outside of the religious services at least once a week. That's pretty abysmal. Those are Canadian statistics just recently. I've given the reference there. You can go online later on if you want to go and look at anything that I've been saying. Follow it through. So barely one in ten out of here, based on the statistics, will talk about the Lord outside of this room on Sunday morning. We're not taking a stand. We're not taking a stand. We're being shut down. Okay? Speak up. It's going to cost you. It may cost you your friends. It may cost you your job. It may cost you your family. It might cost you your career. Ask Elmer whether it's worth it. All right? Amen? Okay? You're not always going to be here. You're going to stand in front of the living God. So am I. Take a stand. Okay? Wake up. Take a stand. And where am I going with this? No, the word. And we're not going to change the culture. I am not about reversing the culture and let's go back to the previous era, the good old days. No, the good old days were just as bad as these days. These days, they just look different, just worse, and it's just bad in a different way. I don't want a school where you're forced to pray to a God you don't even believe in by a person that doesn't even believe in God. What good is that? Right? I don't want to live in a society that forces Christian rules on people barbarically, but at the same time, they're not even Christians that are enforcing the rule. We don't need Christendom. We don't, we don't, we don't need that. Okay? So what do we do? What do we do? Know the Word. That's where it goes. Live the Word, a relationship with a living Savior. Okay? When we know the Word, the Word is a person. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word became flesh. It's a person. Look what Paul said okay, to Timothy. But as for you, continue in what you've learned to become convinced of because you know those from whom you've learned it and how from infancy you've known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So what am I talking about? Know the Word, the person. Remember like we talked about last week, it's Christ in us. Here's the verse I've been quoting. Right? Know Him. Your only hope, my only hope, is not to go out there and change society. God hasn't called me to change society. He hasn't called you to change society. Whatever change He brings about is going to come from the transformation, transformation of people's hearts and how they will impact wherever they are, whether it's in the home, whether it's in school, or the university, in the legal system, wherever God sends you. That brings about change. But my intent is not to go out there and try to reverse the culture. The culture is on its way quickly to hell. It's about reaching people, standing by, knowing the person. 
word okay the word is critical to sharpen us and mature us look what paul said all scripture is god breathed inspired by god some of the translations god breathed and useful for teaching rebuking correcting and training in righteousness so the man of god may be thoroughly equipped for every good work what is this about know the person know the living word jesus and then from that, know His words, what He said to sharpen you and help you to make it through. Because we're blind to this. We're, we're, just, we're just off dreaming. There's another statistic from the Bible Engagement Project just a few years ago. Canadians, one in seven Canadian Christians are 14% read the Bible at least once a week. The majority of Canadians, including those who identify as Christian, read the Bible either seldom or ever. Is that you? Are you an exception to this statistic, or is this you? How are you going to know the person if you don't know his word? It's Christ in us, but he has chosen. He has chosen to give us this. And he breathed into it life by the Holy Spirit. And it says, you, as you're into this, seeking Him, Christ, that's where He meets you. So if you're seldomly in there, no wonder you're blown away by what's going on all around you. You don't stand a chance. Now, the devil can't, uh, praise God for that testimony. I'm secure in Christ. Lovely to hear that. That's right, the devil can't take you away from Christ. But boy, can he tangle you up and mess you up? One in seven Canadians, 13%, about one in four Christians strongly uh, agree that the Bible is relevant to modern life. Are you kidding me? 25% of the people that say they're Christians say the Bible's relevant. What? That's it? God help us. Now you've got to know the word. You've got to know the person. One in ten Canadians, 11%, two out of ten Christians... Reflect on the meaning of the Bible for their lives at least a few times a week. See where I'm going with this? Where, where do you fit in these numbers? Right? You've got to know the Word. So what does that mean? It means you've got to read. And if you don't know how to read, learn how to read. And if that's too difficult, if you can't read, listen. Nobody has an excuse. You can get it all for free on here. All of it for free. And seriously, maybe reading is an issue. I mean, there's people with physical problems. There's just all kinds of things that get in the way. God has given us His gift, and we live in an era where just with a click, we can have it on our phone, we can listen to it in our car when we're driving, right, all over the place. But, hey, we're not going to get to know Him. And I just learn it, but you've got to lead the people around you. See, I'm not talking about going out and changing society. If that's my goal, I'm just going to hit a wall. Just let him change us internally. Meet the living Christ and get to know him. Not, not oh, i got to read my Bible. i got to do this. Okay, checklist is off. No. But get in there and listen. And Lord, speak to me. I'm being deceived. I have to say that. Lord, I'm, how am I being deceived? That's the whole thing about blindness. You don't even know you're blind. You don't know what you're missing. You know, well, you know you're blind, but you know you you know you don't know what you can't see because you can't see it. Lead, lead, okay. Lead your families. Those of you that are parents, lead your families. Lead the people around you. Lead your children. Lead your friends. Why do we have the Gospel Project? We're hearing about that. Go on the website. Every week, you can, man, you'll get a good diet just from the devotionals that are there. It's great stuff. Thanks, Jeff and, and the team at WBC Kids that have made that available for us. There's a lot to learn in there. You, if you have children, you better be active in your children's education. And if you're not, you are sleeping. And the devil is lying to them. Right? Be involved in the local school. Not with a placard running around protesting. No, but get involved. Volunteer. Get in there. Be the salt and light that God has called you to do. They're your children or your grandchildren or your friends' children if you don't even have children. 
Okay? Some of you, maybe it means homeschool. Some of you, it's Christian education. We got to do something. But it's about getting to know Him. Right? So, why? Okay? Our vision. Number one, Bible based. This is part one. You get another part next week. But God has spoken. God has spoken to us. And we are free. He set us free. And because of that, we're able to seek Him. We're going to worship, and then I'm going to tie some things in. Thanks, team. So, rather close. You can see it. I guess you can tell I get a little passionate about this topic. Because it's really an attack on the, really, the heart of Christ, the heart of who we, who we are. If you could bring the screen up, I'd appreciate that. So we're just coming into our series on vision. Number one, we've said we want to be Bible-based. And we thought carefully and prayed and dug through putting this vision together, the statement. And we're making a statement. The elders, the pastors, the leaders, the teachers. Hmm, Fix some of these slides, but I see I missed that one. Whatever five that is. <laughs> but everybody, all the leaders here, we're saying something to ourselves and we're saying to you, wake up. Wake up. Repeat after me. I'm being lied to. Let me hear that again. I'm being lied to. You are being lied to by the Father of lies. Just wake up. If you, you get confused by all the It is confusing. It is awfully confusing. Just remember something. The Father of lies is there and He's lying to you. That's all. Just take that home. Wake up. Wake up. Take a stand. What did you think when I was talking to you? Was Christ is speaking to you? His word is speaking to you? It's irrelevant what I say. He's speaking to you. Are you going to take a stand for Him? Are you going to take a stand for Him and say, He is the way, the truth, and the life? Okay? Make that decision now. That's what I'm asking you. Make that decision. We're going to close in prayer, and this is what I want you to do. I want you to say, Lord, I've been lied to. Lord, I want to take a stand for you. You gave it all. What a great song to finish with. Thank you. The Lord guided you on that one. He gave it all for us. He's just saying, take a stand. And what does that look like? What I'm saying is, know Him. The person. Just know Him. I didn't say what I said about reading the Word of God to make you feel guilty, to try to force you to go and do something. That you'd... Just say, Lord, if you don't have a hunger for His Word to know Him, ask Him to give you that hunger. Maybe you've never even entered into that relationship. You've been lied to. Enter into a relationship with a living Savior, the living Word of God. Ask Him to give you what you need to take a stand. You and I desperately need Him. Just ask Him to change your heart. Just ask Him to change your heart. He will. That's His business. That's what He does. He's really good at it. And then He'll use you in this culture that's dying because they're dying. They're dying. That's why the lineups to the counseling are endless. You can't get in. Why people are so empty. They've been stripped of all meaning. They've been stripped of life. They're dying. Let them see Christ in you. And that comes, just just breathe this word. Just go, Lord, just 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 get to know Him. That's what it's about. Bible-based. Everything that we do, we want to be on His Word. But it it's what is it? It's not the building. <laughs> it's you. This is your vision. It's you. Father, my prayer is for me, for everyone here, that we would know Christ, know Him personally, the living Word of God, that we would enter, that no one would leave here without entering into a relationship, just like we heard from these wonderful testimonies of baptism. Just awesome to hear from Mike and Austin. God bless them. Thank you, Lord. May everyone in here know what it is to enter into a relationship with the living God through Jesus Christ. Lord, give us the fortitude to take a stand against the lies of the enemy. Give us a hunger for your word, Lord, that we can meet you there as you've designed us. And Lord, may Wallenstein continue. Help us, God, please, to always be centered on the living word of God. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you. Have a good week.